Thursday session. Welcome again to week four of SOC 1010. We are at the semester one of spring 2021. Now in this week, we go about the stratification in United States. And after that, if we have enough time, we can go for global stratification. Let me share the Perfect. So we want to talk about the class categorization in society and in a global, especially at first. In chapter seven, we will talk about the stratification in the United States. And after that, we will talk global in chapter eight. How do you define the media class? How does poverty affect someone's life chances? And can individuals change their social class? Um, how do you define life chances? Chances. What are life chances? Chances. Is there any definition in your mind about life chances? What do you mean by that? Your personal view about the life chances. Like. Um... For example, job, job is a life chance. Job is a life chance or not? Mm, I guess so. It's um, like um, having better access to education, I guess, in certain neighborhoods or um, being able to buy proper clothing for where you live. Mm -hmm. For example, marital status is a life chance or not? Um, it increases my life chances. <laughs> yeah, because of the side effects, good side yes. effects, not bad side effects. For example, supporting mm -hmm. or sense of security or resolving your sense of loneliness or have a goal-directed life. These are the effects and sometimes side effects of, for example, a marriage. And sometimes it is not, it doesn't have any benefit. It's a lot of costs. If you have a good time with yourself and your loneliness after, for example, marriage, you will have a lot of family uh, issues about parenting, about your spouse and other parts of your family. And can individuals change their social class? How do you think about the social class? What does it mean, social class? Um, what does it mean? Well, it's uh, directly related of your um, how much money you have access, right? I mean, One part is social class is about money, other parts. So we have two that, parts. Note that we have two parts. We have socioeconomic status. One part is about the social class. One part is about the economic status. Do you think they are at the same page? everybody with a good economic status has necessarily a good social class or not, or vice versa. Everybody has a good social class necessary will have a good economic status or not. What are the components of socioeconomic class or socioeconomic status? How do you think about the elements and about the components of socioeconomic status? Good or bad, or what are the components? Being able to afford, um, well, like high high class, you have a um, you afford more unnecessary things, I guess. Lower middle class, you afford like the necessities. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the relationship between social class and economic status? The higher class you are, um, is usually you have higher socio um, economics or socio economics. You have higher social standing, mm -hmm. usually. Which finally end to a good money, always. Yeah, it would be more like upper class. You're higher in socio economics. 
Let me talk about an example. If you are, if you are a president, you have the president of a country, for example, you have the highest social class in a country. You are the leader, you are the president. But legally, I don't talk about the illegal benefits, but legally it is not necessary and to a higher economic status. None of our presidents in the United States, none of them never has been one of the richest persons, even Donald Trump, who was a businessman, but he was not the richest man in America. For example, as a faculty of university, you have a very good social class. As an author, you have a good social class. As a charity owner, you have a good social class. But it doesn't mean that it necessarily ends to good profitable economic status. Do you agree with me or not? Mm -hmm. So these are a little different. In socioeconomic status, we have three components. One, the ranking of your status in your society. For example, a teacher has a good ranking, good credit, good prestige in his society or her society. But to be a, to be a teacher, the, it doesn't mean that you have a good, you are earning a good money. Sometimes, sometimes, not always, sometimes, if you have a very small business for yourself, your income will be more than, for example, income a teacher. But to be a teacher has a very high social class, social credit. So the first element of social class, socioeconomic status, not only, not even social class, the first element, the first component of socioeconomic status it is about the ranking of you in your society. Second part, it is about your assets, financial assets, materialistic assets, and your income per month or per year. It is the second part. So the first part, it is about your social stage, social state, social prestige, social credit. The second part is about your financial and income issues about your economic status. The third part, it is about your security in both aspects, in social status and in economic status. How secure, how safe is your position in your, for example, job? More security, more SES. SES is means socioeconomic status. More great in SES is meant more feeling and staging of security you are experiencing. You can uh, look at the text in the internet about the SES, socioeconomic status. Very good knowledge, very scientifically based, good knowledge you can find in human development, in business, in management and about the culture base. For example, some cultures like um, Central of Europe, for example, in near Russia and Polish people, they don't have a, a very good money, but they have a very high level of social class. Why? Because reading book is very, very culture-based, everyday habits in those parts of the world. But in America, it is not a daily habit. I know a lot of American that doesn't read any book daily, sometimes weekly, sometimes yearly. It is not, it doesn't mean that they are not good people or bad people. It means that their social class is related to your, for example, to their culturally based behaviors like reading the books. So it is very important that you know for hiring process and for a stratification about the power and prestige, about the wealth 
power and prestige, we will talk about it. These are the three elements of social categorization about a stratification, wealth, power, and prestige. Based on these parts, we stratify people based on their race, their ethnicity, their religion, their gender, their nationality, and other parts. Level of power, level of prestige, and level of wealth. What is social stratification? Systems of stratification, classical perspectives on social class, contemporary sociological models of the US class structure. It's very good. I love this chapter and next chapter. It is very good. It's not related to your only final grade. Read these two chapters very carefully, very carefully, and go for the newest data about these subjects. Very good for you to have a good analysis about your community, your country, your society, and other parts about the global perspectives, about the stratification, about the distribution of wealth, power, and prestige. Inequality in the United States and poverty in the United States and sociological explanation of social inequality in the United States. At first, also I know that you have the PowerPoint, but try to answer by yourself. It is not important that you answer your wrong answer. I want to know your opinion about it. Most US adults say that they have achieved the American dream. Correct? True or false? False. Is there anything just now so-called American dream in the 21st century with a lot of working class, with a lot of homeless people? Yeah. I love, I love the phrase American dream, but sorry, I cannot find it at least in California. <laughs> so California is a very good state in America. Also, we know that it doesn't have a good financial um, state financial position in the States of America, but it's a good state. They cannot find American dream. Individuals over age 65 have the highest rate of poverty. It is true or false? False. You think they don't have highest rate of poverty? No. Yeah, Gabriela is so smart. Oh. Yeah, why not? Compared with other developed nations, the United States has one of the highest rates of childhood poverty. True or false? Yeah. Uh, same in the names of some other developed nations. What? Australia? Uh, then, uh, yeah, other parts. England. You know G5 and G7, group five and group seven, the seven countries that govern the economy and the, yes, business all around the world. The first America, second one. China. China. China is new, new enter. UK, yes. Russia. Uh, Russia and China is entering. Yes, Russia, but China is entering the New West. UK, France, France, America, Japan, and Germany. These are the major parts. Also, now we know that after America, the greatest community, not the greatest country, the greatest financial community, financial union all around the world is European, European Union. <laughs> as a one union, not as a one country. In the Europe, the most powerful, economically powerful country is, which is the major financial economic pillar of the Europe. How do you think? France, Germany, UK. As a business student, how do you think about which country is the greatest pillar, economic pillar of Europe? France, Germany, England. England. 
And what about you, Gabriela? Germany? Yeah, Germany. Germany, Japan and America. Out of China also. These countries after China have the greatest economy all around the world. And beside them there is, yes, UK, Russia, and France. But Germany, Japan, America, and China. These are the major four, major four countries that have the greatest impact on the economy all around the world. Especially in Europe, the basic part of Europe is based on Germany. In Easter, in, in Oriental countries, after China also, Japan is the greatest, has the greatest economy. And here in North America, also Canada is very good, but in North America, United States of America is the greatest and biggest, has the biggest economy. Do you know uh, what is the ranking on population of America all around the world? What is the most popular uh, population world, uh, country in the world? Which country is the most crowded country China. in the world? China. And after China? India. India. And after India? US. US, yes. US is the third country in the world on population. But not about the uh, the land that had the greatest country about the mile square is, it's not America. It is the greatest country of the world. Guess also a great part of, of this country is in the North Pole. I know they cannot use it but it is from the country, Canada. Before Canada, it was Russia. When Russia was a lot of country that now, uh, now they have separated from old Russia, USSR. In that time, it was Russia. But after separating the countries from the USSR, now the greatest is Canada. I, th I think the second one or the third one is also America. But in population, America is the third one with near um, yeah, 300 millions and 80, yeah. In the United States, a family of four is considered to be poor if the household earn less than $40,000 per year. It is poor or not? That's false. How much do you think we can consider a family of four person as a poor family? Uh, you will be a businesswoman after these years. How do you think? It's under, under 20 or 20 or under, I think it is. Somewhere close to that. It's like also, it is, also, it is relative to the estate. It yeah. is relative to the estate. It's very important that when you are talking a poor family in America, which state of America you are talking about? For example, in California, yes. Near $40,000 is at the lowest part. For a, not a very good life, but for an ordinary life. But in Texas, it is not. In North Dakota, it is not. In Alaska, it is not. You can see the average income of different states of America. But in California, yes. We can call it not poor, but uh, in the lower part. The wealthiest person in the world is from the United States. Who is the wealthiest person just now? The guy from Tesla? Mm, Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk? Or Donald Trump? No, it's not Trump. <laughs> yes, it's not Trump. Trump is not, is, I think, 
at the right angle of 50, not 15, 50. Jeff Bezos? Yeah. Okay. Elon Musk? Bill Gates? Not Bill Gates. Warren Buffett? No, it's the guy from Amazon. Jeff right? Bezos? Yeah. From Amazon. Yeah. Jeff Bezos, the, it is uh, turning back and go forward between Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk. Elon Musk, the company of Tesla and now SpaceX, and the previous company was PayPal. But Jeff Bezos, yes, Amazon. Two years, two years before this time, it was, I think, Bill Gates was two years, two years ago. It was Bill Gates. The worst person in the world from, from the United States. Also, this uh, question is about 2012. In that time, it was, I think, I am not sure about it. I think it was Jack Ma. Jack Ma for the Aladdin. Aladdin is a site like Amazon in China. I think, I am not sure about it. Slavery still exists in the United States. Is it possible? True or false? Slavery still exists in the United States. What does it mean slavery here? In a capitalistic economy system like America, what is the most frequent, most popular type of slavery here in America? Like when you don't pay enough for the, mm -hmm. for the work. Yeah. Work. Sometimes, of, for example, job slavery are more important than everything. Also, it is not only for America. It is about the all it, around the it, world. It, it, it's true. Yeah, it is money slavery. Money slavery is mean yeah. that you With are the you don't work clothing, for money. Uh, the fast fashion um, yeah. industry. Yeah, it's true. It is called money slavery in America. And the opposite is money independence or money freedom. Some states have a higher minimum wage than the federal minimum wage. It's true or false? True. And since the 1970s, the gap between the rich and the poor in the United States has decreased significantly. It's true or false? It's false. A decrease, it is increase. Yeah. So what is social stratification? Social stratification is the hierarchical arrangement of large social groups based on their control over basic resources. So what are the keywords? Groups and resources. These are the keywords basic control over the basic resources only by large social groups, not large societies. Is the hierarchical arrangement of large social groups based on the control over basic resources. If I want to consider another important keyword, I can choose also the word control. You can find the meaning of control in the heart of the meaning of social stratification. And life chances, I had a question about it. Life chances refers to the extent to which individuals have access to important societal resources, such as a food, clothing, shelter, education, and health care. Note that it is not about the welfare chances. It is about life chances. You can see here, the bare necessities of life, the bare necessities of life, only food, clothing, shelter, education, and healthcare, basic parts, basic needs. We are not talking about the, for example, wealth chances or money chances or uh, well being chances. We are talking about life chances. Under this threshold of chances for food, clothing, shelter, education, and healthcare, these are the basic needs for you. These are the bare necessities of the life. Under this threshold, 
your life will be at the danger, the hazard of destroying, of dying. So because of that, we call it life chances. It refers to the extent, how much it is easy for you to access to a, uh, to a good food for the night, to your clo cloth, shelter for dying or health care for illness and other parts. The extent is called life chances. Life chances refers the extent to which individuals have access to important societal resources, such as food, clothing, shelter, education, and health care. So we have some keywords here, uh, like important societal resources. These are the keywords. And extent and access. So societal, extent, and access are the most important. Are also resources. We are talking about three parts of mobility, social mobility, intergenerational mobility, and intragenerational mobility. We have talked about a lot about the intra and inter in the previous sessions. Social mobility is the movement of individuals or groups from one level in a strategic system to another. Everybody loves it. Also, sorry. Social mobility is not always in an upper trend, sometimes in a downtrend. For example, when you experience bankruptcy, yes, you have social mobility, but from upper social level to the lower social level, because you are bankruptcy. But something which is very favorite for everyone is going upper than what I am now moving in an upper trend, not moving in a lower trend. So social mobility is the movement. It is not about the positive direction or negative direction. It is about the movement, sometimes in positive direction, upper trends, and sometimes in negative directions, down trends or lower trends of individual or groups from one level in a stratification system to another. For example, um, in the last one year, in addition to COVID-19, America experienced some social crisis. The greatest social crisis, not the greatest social problem. The greatest social crisis in the past year was the movement of Black Lives Matter. Do you think after this movement, the stratification system for black people is better or no, worse. Which part? Is black people have now a better position in the society, stratification, mobility, social mobility to the upper levels or no, they are at the same level uh, in contrast with the uh, levels before the movement or no, they have downer and lower and lower. How do you think, Gabriela? Um, I think it's still changing. Um, it's it's a process, but I think it, it was a good um, start yeah. for change. Mm -hmm. And you saw it was very surprising for me because I am the uh, very supportive from the LGBT movements. I think as a psychologist, I think. It's a good movement, good movement. Love is love. Mm -hmm. Everyone can change his or her direction, sexual direction, without any religious or social pressure. It is mm -hmm. related to people. We cannot say people that, why are you, for example, transgender or transsexual, which is not related to anybody. Also, yeah. as a psychologist, I, I know that it is biologic based, some emotional part, and finally, love is love. It's not important. We saw in the Black Lives Matter that the LGBT movement added to this movement, especially in Los Angeles. Feministic movement added to this movement. Other parts from the lower social stratification add them to their movement. Why? Because it is about the movement for lower, not lower social class, for lower stratification for people 
that other people and sometimes the states and sometimes governors and government people don't want to look at them that yes they have a good and they should have and they must have good right of human rights for example for lgbt's for black people for female also it is about 200 years at least 200 years in america uh, because of that the question said do you think slavery is still in the united states or not and the answer was yes other modern types of slavery feministic slavery or female slavery or racist slavery it is not about the, for example uh, slavery of black people or slavery of other minority it is very hidden parts but it is still in the united states and intergenerational ability is the social movement experienced by family members from one generation to the next for example i think from now after two to yes after five years from now i think and i wish courtney will be our dba student and after five years uh, his children at the age of 12 or 13 at the age of at the beginning of the teenage and they say to their classmate with the honor that yes my mom is dba student and after that, we will call him Dr. Livesey. Now, for example, man, it is a source of passion, source of honor for her children. It is intergenerational. Why? Because her children will begin education, for example, before marriage. Because they have seen that. Uh, okay, mother is so happy, very good, but it's a very high pressure situation. Studying, parenting, as a wife, as a citizen and other parts. It is intergenerational. We have seen our parents that they have tried a lot for themselves, for ourselves. And we think that we should be a new generation with the new movement, with the new attitudes, with the new lifestyles, it is intergenerational in by family members. But intragenerational mobility is the social movement of individuals within their own lifetime. For example, my personal life is a type of intragenerational. At first, I went to the engineering university for about three years in industrial engineering when I was 20. And after that, I found that, sorry, I cannot be a good engineer. And I went, it is mandatory in my country, going to military services for two years, for male also only. I went to military service. And after when I was 27, I again entered because in my country, there is a very hard entry exam. You cannot go to the bachelor degree, very simple. It very, very, especially for the state, as one for the governmental or federal uh, universities that you get, it is not necessary to pay money and very high quality of education. It, is, it has a very hard entry exam. At the age of 27, I went to medical school. And until the age of 31, I studied nursing. And after that, I had also my wife. And after that, I worked for nine years as a psychiatric nurse in the mental hospital. During that time, I found, oh, oh, I can be a good psychologist. During that time, I went to the university again and very hard entry exam for master degree. I passed a very hard exam and switched my major from nursing to psychology, clinical psychology. It's very, very crowded field in my country. Also in America, clinical psychology is very crowded. Everybody wants to go to clinical psychology. I was nurse, I was husband, I had a lot of night shifts. And during that time I started. And after that, at the end of the master degree, I uh, leave the nursing part and go to the psychology as a public figure and the faculty of university of my country. And that time I started again PhD with a very, very hard, more harder than every exam you have. You, know, you can imagine, it is the PhD entry exam in my country. It is very hard. It is nine hours, three days per day, three hours. 
It is you should say and say and say. And after that, it is intragenerational. Different parts. And now I'm, yeah, I'm in America. Also, it is a very intergenerational because none of my family members has a good education, formal education. They study a lot, but it is not about the formal. I am the only, for example, PhD in my family members. It is intergenerational mobility because my father dreams was one of my greatest father dreams was I, uh, for me that yes, you can and you should have a good higher education. And after that, and in myself, you see that, wow, up, down, up, down, go to the military and leaving the engineering and going to the medical school and marriage and working a master degree and public figure number one in entry. And, 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 and after that, in the age of 47, I left everything, everything in my country. I, I came to America. Again, another intragenerational mobility. It is a life history that all of us has a specific life history. If I want uh, Gabriel say about her life history, he has, she has up down, also Courtney and other people. You see here in one of the philosophers and socio philosopher philosophers about the sociology, Max Weber, the coin. Uh, bureaucracy, bureaucracy is the word of Max Weber. Max Weber term life chances. It's very important to know about the term of life chances refers to the extent to which people have access to resources such as food, clothing, shelter, education, other parts. You can see in the picture that in a one single, in a one single place, location of a city, I don't know, where is it? You can see different social classes. Also, it is related to the country. For example, in America, one street to another street, you can find different people in social, only one street. In my country, no, one area to another area. It is, America is very, very, a lot of contrast between, for example, only two countries, there are only two streets. One street in the San Diego, and for example, other after two streets, you see a lot of homeless, and before that, you see a lot of, for example, multi millionaire people. It is about the life chances. Slavery, at the extreme form of stratification, is slavery. Extreme form at the end, the highest, the maximum. Slavery is an extreme form of stratification in which some people are owned or controlled by others for the purpose of economic or sexual exploitation. Please pay attention, please note that we are talking about the exploitation and control. Slavery is an extreme form of stratification in which some people are owned or controlled by others for the purpose of economic or sexual exploitation. So the key word in slavery is exploitation. You work for my goals. You work for my achievement. You work and I will use your achievement for my own goals, for my own achievement. It's this type of explo exploitation. Some of the ancient and old systematic exploitation, for example, uh, about going to other countries with the military forces, something uh, which has happened in America a lot of people from England, especially from uh, Spain and Portugal about, yes, it was uh, 15th century. Now, 1494 is the conquest of America. I don't know, have you seen the movie 1494, Conquest of Paradise? It is the life of Christopher Columbus, the, uh, someone who has first entered America and discovered America. It is a very, very good, very good movie about 25 years ago. Uh, and the French actor, I forget her, his name, the French actor uh, played the role of Christoph Columbus, 1494, uh, Conquest of Paradise. It is the old fashioned exploitation 
going some other parts of the world and bring our military forces to th those parts and capture those lands for our achievement, for our financial, sexual, and political achievement and goals. It is exploitation. Now it has become the form of exploitation, the form of slavery has been changed. We are becoming other people. We are making other people our slaves by information, by internet, by economic pressure. Not directly, it is indirectly and very, very influencing, more influencing than the old fashioned exploitation, the old types and old forms of sexual exploitation or economic exploitation. Uh, do you know what is um, Emancipation Proclamation? Who has signed the Emancipation Proclamation? No. Courtney, do you know what is Emancipation Proclamation? Um, giving the right to vote. Um, it was Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, it is about 1862, I think. And he talked the freedom for slave, for Negro slave. And after 100 years, in 1963, Martin Luther King Jr. has a very famous lecture in Washington, D.C., so-called, the name of the lecture is, I have a dream, I have a dream. And after that, Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated and killed. He was a great man. He was a great leader. In that lecture, Martin Luther King says that um, a great American, Abraham Lincoln, signed the Emancipation Proclamation. But after 100 years, the Negro is not free. It's not still free. That's a right and very suffering act of American society and also in other parts of the world. But America has the flag of freedom all around the world. And in the land of freedom, you see a lot of slave people just now. It is not about the, for example, money slavery or body slavery. Uh, do you know anything about the sex traffic? Sex traffic, the greatest country in sex traffic is America from other countries, especially in the, from Far East, especially from Far East, from poor countries of Far East and from Africa. Yes, it is the country of law and order, but in reality, you can find a lot of disorders, a lot of illegal and a lot of slavery. Because of that, we say, yes, now in America, we can find the slavery. A caste system. Do you know what is caste system? And what is the country, the origin of country of caste system? It's a very famous country. If my father is a king, I am the prince. It is a caste system. It is a scribe characteristic, characteristics. A scribe characteristics are the features that you acquire them at, the, at, the, you, at your birth. It is because of your family, your ethnicity, your country. You don't acquire during your lifespan. It is a caste system. The origin of caste system and the name of caste system also is from India. India, the traditional kingdom system in India was based on caste system. A caste system is a closed system of social equality in which people's status is permanently determined at birth based on their parents' scribe characteristics. A caste system is a closed system of social inequality. At first, it is about inequality. It is not about equality. In caste system, 
if you are born in a poor family, if you are born in a lower social class family, you cannot go up in your society because of caste system. Because of that, it says a closed system of social inequality. And with people status it permanently, doesn't change, never. Also, it is not about uh, this time. Honestly, it is not about this time, but relatively we can find some types of caste system in Asia, in Africa, even in some states of America, which people status is permanently determined at birth based on their parents' ascribed characteristic. So what are the keywords of caste system? At first, the major keyword is ascribed characteristic or parents, the major words. Second, permanently. You're ascribed and permanent. The features which are ascribed features, ascribed characteristics, and they cannot change over the time. They are permanent features for a whole period of your life, for your lifelong. Also, I'm so happy now that after, for example, of protests and the government of Mahatma Gandhi in India, and also in some other parts, now we can find some types of protests against caste system in some Arabic countries like Egypt, like Saudi Arabia, but Pakistan. In my country, there is no caste system. Formally, you cannot find caste system because the real uh, republic, also with a type of different republic in my country, it's Islamic Republic and theocracy. Do you know what is theocracy or theocracy? Do you know what is theo? Theo is the same English pronunciation of um, zeo, Z-E-O, or Z-E-O-S, Zeus, or Zeus. It's a god. Theocracy, like democracy, like bureaucracy, like theocracy, is the government, is a type of government that basically is based on religious orders, specific religious order. And you can find the name of that religion sometimes in the name of that country. For example, Islamic Republic of Pakistan, Islamic Republic of Iran. It is, these are theocratic based on the Taos based on the gods in a specific religion. Not bad, not good, but the, you cannot find any type of freedom out of the religious orders. The problem is that you cannot find the real freedom. Why? Because religion has a, a lot of good items and every religion, Christian, Jewish people, Muslim people, also Buddhism and other parts of religion as lifestyle has some limitation. The problem is that out of these limitation, you are not allowed to do anything. And the basic of government is based on some types of religion. It is theocratic. The type of government is theocratic. T-H-E-O, theo. A class system, class system, other type. The class system is a type of open stratification. It was closed system of social inequality. The class system is the type of open stratification. You can change your social class based on the ownership and control of resources and on type of work that people do. What I have talked about SES, socioeconomic status, is something like the class system. You can change your social class by changing your ownership and control of resources and the type of the work that you do. If your work for your society is important, significant for your society, the society will give you a good prestige. Prestige is the one of three elements of social class, wealth, power, and prestige. Wealth, power, and prestige. These are three elements that shape your social class. How wealthy you are, how powerful you are, and how prestigious you are in your community, in your society. 
So if you want to be successful in your society, you should concentrate on these elements, wealth, power, and prestige. These are the scientific, sociological, scientific-based approved elements of social class. And in class system, you can change your social class by changing your wealth, by changing your power, and by changing your prestige with these parts. The class system is a type of open stratification based on the ownership and the control of resources and a type of work that people do. Also class system is about Karl Marx. We can talk about it just now. You see here, different times, system of stratification include slavery, caste and class. So three system of stratification are slavery, caste and class. The key word of slavery is exploitation. The key word of caste, it's parent scribe characteristic. And it's not closed, it's not open, it is closed. You cannot change your caste system, caste level. And the key word of class system or class theory is based on your social class. You can change it, yes. What are the components of changing your social class? These are power, wealth, and prestige. As shown here, the life chances of people living in each of these systems differ widely. You can different people here in different countries. For example, you can find in the black and white photo, the slavery system based on the exploitation of the economic exploitation, uh, sexual exploitation, you work and I will gain you work for myself and the upper right it is i think it is in india or something like this india indonesia pakistan the, that part because of the dress you can see the lady has it is about caste system we talk about it in india and other parts of those uh, location of world and the down you can see the class system we can change it yes intragenerational for one person and intergenerational for two different generations. And classical perspective on social class, the word social class is from Karl Marx. Every time, everywhere you go in sociology, in history of economy and the philosophy of economy, you can find the name of Karl Marx. The capitalist class or bourgeoisie consists of those who own the means of production. Marx says that we have two social class, owners and workers. And after that, based on Marx philosophy, which is called Marxism, after that, we have Leninism for USSR. And after that, we have socialism. Marxism and Leninism are not live philosophers, sociologists in these days, but socialism, yes, especially for example, in countries like Canada, like North Europe, Norway, Sweden, Denmark and Finland, they are very high socialistic countries. Sometimes have good social security, yes but you cannot find anybody who has a lot of money. It's a bad side of socialism. It's a very fair and equal distribution of money. It was a very good event in Denmark about 10 years ago, I think. The rate of tax was 60%, 60% direct. 60% of your direct earning. They have a poll. They have a question as a governors in the Denmark that people, do you want us to increase the tax rate from 60% to 70%? Only 30% in your pocket. 95% of Danish people said, Yes, now it is near 70%. Why? 
because the social service is so good that they think, yes, why not? It's a very good system. We don't need anything to do as the social support. Everything is free for us. And 30% is very good money in our pocket for other personal wishes and personal desires. Very, very fair. Is it very good? Yes. You know, the life expectancy, the years, one person can desire to be alive. It is life expectancy. It's very professional phrase, life expectancy. In Denmark, it is about 89 years. When you're born in Denmark, government think that you will live at least 89 years. Why? No stress. You go to Denmark, you see a lot of old fashioned cars. Where so rarely they change their car. Why? It's a good car I'm driving. So stressful to be under doubt. Just in opposition is America. Full capitalistic country with a lot of money chances and with a lot of homelessness. Very, very, very bare, very bare necessities of life can be under danger, it can be under hazard in America. Why? Everything is related to money. Also, we have a lot of good charities here, very good companies, very good people, very, very good people. But the economic system is capitalistic. The good side is that you can grow in America. Yes, if you have the good knowledge, good skills, good attitude, and you are young, and you, are, you have a good energy, why not? Welcome to US. But doesn't have any, not fair system. Yes, it is fair, but it is not very uh, good for poor people or for old people, if, especially if they don't have any enough skills of enough money for life. These are the two extremes of economic system socialistic system and capitalistic systems. Marx talk about two social classes, owners of the production means, so-called bourgeoisies, and working class, so-called proletariat. Proletariat in working class consists of those who must sell their labor to owners in order to earn enough money to survive. Also, it is very, I think, extremistic view on social class because Marx says, yes, the working class only wants to be alive, to keep, uh, to, um, keep alive. No, it is a joke. They have a lot of good situations in their country, also in America. Everybody works hard in America. Yes, have a good chance to develop his or her life. But Marx says the capitalist class or bourgeoisie consists of those who own the means of production, they are owner, and the working class must sell their labor only for survival. What is the meaning of alien alienation? Alienation is one of the first words that immigrant from sociology to other parts of knowledge, especially for popular knowledge, alienation or strangerness. Is a feeling of powerlessness and estrangement from other people and from oneself. Sense of hopelessness and sense of helplessness are the result of sense of estrangement from yourself. Depression is the result of sense of estrangement from yourself not about loneliness, not about having good or not good money, good or bad social situation. They are the extra factors. They are not the risk factors for depression, for homeless, for helplessness, for hopelessness. When you think that I'm not the same one that I want to be, and I am not the same one that I can to be, we have two images of self, real self, it is not image, and ideal self, it is image. 
the distance, the more distance between your real self and your ideal self, the more depression, the more frustration, the more hopelessness, the more helplessness you will experience. More distance, far distance from your real self, when and where you are now in the world, in your life, about your feeling, about your attitudes, about your partnership, about your job, everything. It is your real life, your real self, especially about your self-image, self-concept, self-esteem, self-confidence body image and other parts of other components of yourself and far distance from your ideal self. Wow. The ideal Arash I want to be, I'm not the same one. This distance creates at first, at first anxiety. And after that, it creates frustration, helplessness, hopelessness, and depression. And finally, it is called alienation. Alienation is the root of every type of depression. And class conflict is the struggle between the capitalist class and working class. Working class wants to be an owner. It is alienation. He or she doesn't accept his role. An owner class or bourgeoisie wants to keep his or her situation in the society. He or she is in the ideal self and he or she is in real self. And the distance is conflict. Distance between the poverty, distance between the bourgeoisie and proletariat. This is called class conflict. It's the struggle between the capitalist class and working class. It is a Marx. Well, you, sense, you can see in the graph, capitalist to workers, Capitalists have own and control means of production. Also, it is from the time of uh, industrial production. It is not about our modern age. Our modern In our modern age, we are talking about the information. So it is not about the means of production. It is the means of information. Also, the now is the age of information. Have you seen the movie Godfather? Godfather is one of the greatest trilogy three parts, three movies, Godfather one, two, three. Uh, it is about the mafia, about the five mafia, five gang families in the New York in 1950s and 1960s, I think, or maybe 1940s. In the third episode of Godfather, in the third movie, you can see they have switched. It is about 20 years ago. The part three is about three, 20 years ago, I think, at least 20 years ago. They have switched their activities from gambling, from prostitution, from substance to computer, to market of computer. They are gangsters. They have mafia. They have illegal parts and legal money, black money, black market in prostitution in underground gambling, in substance and drug dealership. They switch their market from these parts to one part of, for example, computer science. What does it mean? In that movie shows that, yes, gangs are the same. The subject and the object of gangstership has been changed, not people, they are gangster. They do illegal parts in the computer. Why? Because the market, for example, the information of computer is now greater and more important from, for, rather than, for example, prostitution, rather than cocaine and other parts. Because of that, now we don't say own, own and control means of production. Now owns and control means of information, means of communication. And after COVID-19, the type of capitalistic system will be changing the, at the maximum of two years from now. Start if you want to enter the market and you want and you should enter the market after two years after graduation, start studying about the changes because of COVID-19, because the virtual space, the cyber space, the internet, just like this online class, it will be very routine, very, very routine. Go to the Stanford site 
and start studying about this phrase, persuasive technology in the Stanford site. Go to the University of Stanford site for more and persuasive technology, persuasive technology. The book has been written about 2003, but it is for the time of now. And we have behavior design lab, behavior design lab. Also in CalMU, we are creating some parts so-called transformation center of excellence. You can find it in CalMU. I am the director of that center. Also it is DBA launched, but my concentration is for BA and MA and DBA about the transformation that you should know about the business, not about very, very far business, about very sh not too far business, about two years from now. Behavior design and workforce transformation, go to the site after the logo of CalMU at the right part, you see the centers of excellence. And the fourth center is transformation center of excellence. And you go and see some videos. One video is about this part, I think, Dr. Falk, Dr. Falk from Stanford. And other video, it is about workforce transformation. Very, 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 very hot and new concepts in business. Very hot and new. This is 2020. Workforce transformation. And the third part, it is about transformation in all aspects of business. So behavior design, persuasive technology, and workforce transformation. Start studying and knowing about this concept. Your competitive advantage for entering the market for the next one to two years is are these material or these concepts. If you don't know them, if you cannot uh, use them, you are old fashioned. Only after two years, you will be old, old fashioned businesswoman and you cannot enter the good market. You will be a very simple businesswoman or simple employee in a company until the end of your life. It is not so worthy. You are young, smart, and curious. You can find something new. These concepts go to the that chapter, and I am uploading also some uh, newest uh, videos in this chapter in that uh, excellence. Uh, center of excellence, transformation center of excellence. And also one part is about um, women empowerment. You can go also to that center, it's very good. Our workers work for wages, vulnerable to displacements by machines or cheap labor that uh, it has happened just now. In the Marx time, yes, it was a vulnerability to displacement. Now, a lot of workers have changed and displaced by machines. What is the phenomenon of McDonaldism? We have talked about it. What is the phenomenon of McDonaldism? It was about the rapid and automatic. When you talk about phenomenon of McDonaldism, you are talking about the cheap product, rapid product, and non-human product, automatic product. These are the three elements of McDonaldism. Every country, every the factory that wants to say, yes, we are working on the style of McDonald's or McDonaldism style. They should say that we are so rapid, we are so rich, when we, are, we have a good automation, not using human forces. Also from the aspect of, of the aspects of money and cost, it is very good. But uh, about the employee and human force, it is not good. A lot of people will lose their job when entering such high tech of automa automation. Also, I hope that we will create some newest and most modernized job for new generation. But for old generation, if the old generation cannot adopt and adjust himself or herself with the new modern life, they will destroy very, very soon, maximum rate between the two or three years all around the world. The atmosphere of job has changed. Everything has gone to cyberspace, everything. I don't know what about, for example, something like car dealership. Car dealership also is in cyberspace before COVID about the concert about the medical exams. Some parts, very, very right parts will be physical. So be enter 
and study on cyberspace. It is very important. It is not too far. It is about the days that you want to enter the professional, your professional jobs. You see, no more low wages. And today, the new president said that, welcome, we have $50, $15 per hour. Joe Biden says by honor that, yes, we have increased the wages per hour from 12 to 14 to 15. Okay, go for a break of 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes in 8055, come here because I want to say you about the password and enter. And after that, you have one hour. You should pass in this time because you are hybrid students. Online students not important. So after 10 minutes, be here, please. Okay.
Welcome back. So go to your midterm in week four in Moodle room. In your Moodle room. Mm -hmm. And let me share. Can you see it? Spring 2021. Mm -hmm. Spring 2021. Enter the exam. After entering, you have one hour to take the exam. Okay. Check it and say me. When you entered, say me that you have entered. Successful. Because after that, I will not at the class. Okay, I'm in. You entered? Mm -hmm. And Courtney, what about you? Perfect. Have a good exam. I will let you until the end of the week. Bye. So it's, it's all, uh, just one question. It's all only paragraphs. I don't have to do like essays. Oh, no, okay. only one paragraph. The content is important for me. Not okay. the amount of the word. Also, it is, if it is very short, it is not the same. But okay. the content of answer is very important for me. It is not high school, it is university. Got it. It's Thank important you. for me that to be sure that you know the answers and you can find the answers, it's not important. Okay, and once I'm done, I can just leave. Yeah. Okay. Have a good time, bye. Thank you.